Hi and welcome students. Today's tutorial will cover Microsoft Excel 2016 and how to calculate a loan payment using the PMT function. The PMT function calculates loan payments based off of a constant interest rate and constant payments. I'm going to use buying a car as my example for today's scenario. Let's go ahead and get started. So I have uh, car loans right here and I have a business loan request. So let's say that you're going out and you're going to buy a car for $30,000, but you don't have any money, so you need to take out a loan. Well, the loan amount is going to be $30,000. So I basically set up a spreadsheet here, uh, very easy to set it up, set up. You could set it up the same way if you want, no matter if it's a car loan, a house loan, or anything else that you might be looking at. So right here, I put uh, basically three columns. I have column A, which are my first loan option, column B, and column C. Those are my three loan options right there. And let's say that uh, I have three different options for this loan. As I said, the loan amount is right here. That's $30,000 for each of them. And then I see that from there, my numbers change a little bit. Right here is the annual interest rate. And then right here are the number of years. So for instance, the first loan option says $30,000 for 6% interest rate and five years. The next one, $30,000, 5% interest rate, so a little bit lower of an annual interest rate. And then the number of years, you have longer to pay it off. And then finally, $30,000, 4%, so that's even lower, and you have more time to pay it off. So if I look at these three loans, I might initially say that this 4% over 15 years might be the best option for me when it comes to monthly payments. Now, one of the things that I want to figure out is what will my monthly payment be on this loan? And then eventually, what will the annual payment be? So how much will I actually pay per year? And then finally, what's the total payment? So we can actually see over the entire course of the loan, how much will I pay throughout the entire thing? So you could uh, set up your spreadsheet like this. I have mine already set up. And then we get to this line right here. It says payments per year. Well, most of the time on loans, at least for car loans, you're going to be paying uh, 12 times per year or monthly, right? So I could just go right here to payments per year and I could type in 12 into each of those uh, options, okay? So I have 12 payments per year every single time, okay? Now, I don't know about the accuracy of these numbers, so it's not really the numbers that matter, it's actually how to do this. So you would just plug in your numbers uh, along with, uh, or in your options. So we put the payments per year right there, that's 12. That number, as long as you're paying monthly, will not change, all right? Then we have interest rate per period, okay? Well, that's a little bit different than annual interest rate. I'm not going to be paying this loan once a year. I'm gonna be paying it once a month. So therefore, the interest rate per period is equal to, so I type an equal sign, and then I click on the 6%, again, which is the annual interest rate for loan option A, okay? And then I divide by the amount of payments that I have. So I'm gonna click right here, on uh, the 12 right there. So then now it says equals B6, which is my annual interest rate, divided by B7, which is the amount of payments per period. Okay. Once I type that out, or once I click on those two, I can press tab or enter to finalize that um, figure right there. And we see that the interest rate per period is 50% for loan option A. Okay. So that looks good. So rather than doing this equation two more times, I'm gonna use the autofill handle to basically fill my formula over to option B and C. So I click right here on the point or 0 0.50 percentage, and then I go to the bottom right where I see this autofill handle. You guys should be able to see it on my screen. I'll zoom in just a little bit more. So you can see it right there. And I click and drag that over through option C. And I see that interest rate per period, 0 0.5, 0 0.42, 0 0.33. We would expect this to be the case because, again, that is the annual interest rate. And basically, the interest rate per period uh, will be this divided by 12, right? So we expect it to get lower. Our formulas are correct. All right, cool. So then we get down here, and it says total payments. Well, total payments, what does that mean? That means the amount of time that you're actually paying for the loan. So uh, in this case, it's going to be 12 times however many years uh, you're going to pay for the loan. So right here, I'm going to start out with the equal sign, okay? And then I see that my payments per year is right up here, and that's 12, okay? So that looks good. So then I have to multiply that by the amount of years that I'm actually going to be paying off this 
of the loan. Well, this first loan, I'm going to be paying it off for five years right there. So I'm going to do multiply by, and then I'm going to click on the five. Okay, now it's important that I click on the five rather than just typing in five. If I just type in five and I try to copy this formula down, that's not going to work because the option B and option C loans are not for five. Again, so B7 times B9. It's important that I always do cell references rather than doing actual number references, right? So I have my cell references right here. I press tab or enter again, and I see that this loan I will pay 60 times over the course of the loan. So I have to make 60 payments on this. After the 60 payments are done, it's complete. I'm good to go. So that looks good right there. Now I'm going to go to the bottom right of this cell, just like I did on the payments per year line, and I'm going to click and drag this over through option B and option C. Now we expect that these numbers will be larger as we go. And so I see right there 120 months and 180 months. Again, that's because this is 12 times 10, right? 12 times 10. The payments per year times the number of years and then this one over here is 12 times 15 right so 120 and 180 respectively all right so that's the whole first part of getting to the PMT um, the PMT function. Now that I have this information, I could actually figure out what my monthly payments are going to be. So I could go right down here to option A and I could say, all right, well, I have to figure out how to do this PMT function again. So what I can do is I could go to the formulas tab right up here. You guys can see I'm on the formulas tab. And then I could go to the function library, which is this list of books right here. And then within these books, I could go right here to financial. Okay. And you'll see this green financial book with the coins on it. And if you click that financial button, it'll give you a long list of different uh, functions that you could choose. Eventually, as you scroll down, they are in alphabetical order. You're going to find this one right here. PMT calculates the payment for a loan based on constant payments and a constant interest rate. Now, if I click on this right now, it's going to put the PMT function to whatever is my active cell. You guys can see on my screen, B12 is my active cell, which lets me know that if I click this, it's going to put the data into B12. So I click right there. And there we go. Uh, the function argument dialog box pops up and I can see right down here it says equals PMT. That lets me know that this is where this monthly payment is going to go. Now this one here is right below option A. So this is going to be the monthly payment for option A. And we see right here that it says PMT and then it has a list of different arguments that I could put in right here. And it says rate NPER, PV, FV, and type. Notice that FV and type, which stand for future value and type, are not in bold. This means that these two do not have to be filled out. Okay, they're optional requirements. Or, uh, sorry, that's their optional uh, numbers that you can put in there. So rather than doing that, I'm going to focus on these top three, which are in bold right here. Okay. Now let's say I see this one right here and it says rate, and I don't know what the rate is. Remember the function argument dialog box, it, it tells you exactly what it is right down here. Rate is the interest rate per period for the loan. For example, use 6% divided by four for quarterly uh, payments at 6% percent APR. All right. Well, we've already actually calculated um, the rate per period, right? That's why uh, it was important to figure out the rate per period. So under rate, I see my rate per period. I've already calculated it right there. So all I have to do right now is click on that 50%. If I click on that 50%, it says B8 right there. That looks good. Okay. The next one down, NPER. That is the total number of payments for the loan. Okay. Now this is part where this is a part where the students get confused. Typically, they say, "Oh, total payments for the loan." Well, it's a five-year loan, so I'm going to click on five. Well, that's not necessarily true because it's five times um, the monthly payment, which is twelve. So instead of just clicking on the five there, you need the total number of payments for the loan. So the total number of payments is right down here. We've already calculated that. Okay. Again, the initial setup gets it so that we could just click on the number or on the cells rather than having to do calculations in this function argument dialog box. All right. So there's our total number of payments for the loan, which is sixty right there. And then we get down here to present value. Uh, or PV, right? Uh, PV, present value, uh, that's the total amount uh, that a series of future payments is worth now. Okay, that's a complicated way of basically saying that's what the current uh, 
loan amount is for. So uh, that's basically saying, all right, how much is your loan for? Well, in this case, we're doing a $30,000 loan. So all we have to do is click right there on that 30,000. Okay, and it says B5, and then look at that. It gives us a little bit of a preview right here. It says negative 579.98. The reason that it's negative is because it's a payment, right? It's going out, so it's going to show up as a negative number. So I click OK. All right, and so I say, all right, that looks good. Uh, negative 579. Now, for me, that's paying the loan. I typically want to see my numbers in a positive number um, because if it's in a positive number, uh, I pretty much have have it in my head that I'm going to be paying that out. That's that's fine with me. So if you ever want to make your uh, your numbers right here positive you guys will see that if uh, you look up in the function argument or sorry the formula bar right up here it gives you your uh, full uh, function you just click right before the PMT and put a minus symbol and if you put that minus symbol and press enter it's gonna show up as a positive number there that way you know that you actually are gonna owe uh, 579 okay doesn't matter if you do that Either way is fine, but anyway, 579 is my monthly payment. Now, the cool thing was we only use cell references here. So if, since we only use cell references, we could actually take the bottom right of this and move it over using the autofill handle like we did before. And there we go. We have uh, our value right there. So 579 per month for our option A loan, 318 for our option B, and 221 for our option C loan. So we say, all right, that looks good. I pretty much know what my payment is going to be at this point. Now we get to annual payments. So check this out. For annual payment, all that's going to be is equal to, so I'm going to type in an equal sign, click on the 579, and then multiply by 12. Okay, so I multiply by 12 right there, and I press tab or enter, and I see right there, it says 6,959. So that's how many dollars per year I'm going to be spending on this car loan. So I click right there. That looks good. And so then I click and drag the autofill to move that across. So now I see, all right, that option A, uh, I'm going to be paying about 7,000. Option B, about 4,000. And option C, about uh, 2,500, right? So then I say, all right, well, that's pretty clear. I mean, option C is is my winner. I mean, it's going to be uh, less money per month, less money per year. And that's kind of how some people think about loans, but then they forget to add in uh, your total payment throughout the entirety of the loan. And so let's go back to option A right here. Okay. And let's say uh, we want to calculate the total payment for this loan, right? So by the time that we pay all of our principal and all of our interest, how much is it going to cost? And so let's do an equal sign right there. And then let's multiply the annual payments times the number of years, right? So that's the annual payments times the number of years. So that's going to be um, the total amount that we pay on the loan. So I do that. So that's going to be B13 times B9 on my spreadsheet. And then I press tab and I see that that cost is going to be $34,799. So the amount of interest that you're paying is going to be $4,799. So we say, all right. There we go, we know that now. And so let's take this uh, autofill handle and drag it across. And you'll see that since you have to pay so many more payments, even though they are lower for options B and option C, you could actually see that see that um, throughout the entirety of the loan, you actually end up paying four thousand or even six thousand, you know, rough rough estimates more than you would have in option A. So for somebody that is just looking at these three loans, they might initially say, "Oh, you know what? I don't want to pay six hundred dollars a month compared to two twenty one." Um, but in reality, by by the time it's all said and done, you end up paying more on the 221 because of the amount of time that it took you to actually pay uh, off the loan, right? So even though the interest rate was initially lower um, and the monthly payment is lower, if you have to pay that more times then eventually offsets and so um, if you could afford the 579 per month on this loan then that would actually be your best option in the long run because it would be cheaper so um, hopefully that you know hopefully that explains a little bit about loans and and uh, why you might take option a instead of option C even though it has a higher monthly uh, payment right so hopefully this has explained the PMT function I know uh, you know it's a little long-winded there but I like to make sure everybody 
kind of understands what's going on in Excel and a little bit about the background and how to set up your cells uh, and calculate those things that it works well by the time you actually get to the PMT function and you're not doing calculations in there instead. Uh, but anyway, thank you for watching. Uh, if you like this video, please subscribe to the channel. I do have uh, weekly videos that come out every single week and they cover different tutorials on Office and other things. So anyway, please consider subscribing. Please give it a thumbs up if this video helped you out and have a great rest of your day. Thank you for watching.